Come on over here. Come on over here, Cody. Come on here and see Dad. Come in. Ah, oh, you can jump. You can jump. Oh, no. Oh, that's, you can do better than that. I know that for a fact. Well, here, let's turn, turn the camera around here so we can see a little crap. Hi, guys. So, I, uh, I thought it time to sell my Volkswagen. And uh, I got over to the mechanic for some uh, extra sprucing up and uh, uh, some extra prep work done to it for sale. Uh, it runs like a top. And uh, I just came to that decision because I, I've enjoyed them for so many years. I've always had a Volkswagen bus. And uh, I'm at a point now where I want to not only travel further and faster, but I want to be able to travel deeper. So I'm going to take the sell from the money from the bus, combine it with some more money, and uh, get myself uh, a four-wheel drive vehicle that I haven't completely decided upon what type it will be just as of yet. But with that, um, it will definitely uh, provide me a way to uh, also continue to have the capacity for supplies with remote backpacking camping to do the type of adventures I like where I'm out for uh, long periods of time. Uh, this season I haven't been out yet uh, for as long or as far as I had uh, anticipated you customarily being. Uh, just because some family things and uh, household maintenance stuff that I've had to tend to that have delayed the issue. So anyway, um, I'm burning in the gullet to get out there, and I decided, you know what? I think this is the year for it. So I got uh, all my gear cleaned out. I got to tell you that when I took and got the remainder of my specialty ultralight equipment out of the van. At that moment, I had a depression come over me. Just a terrible depression. It was like taking a pet to the vet. I just, I, I, I had, I felt like I was really losing something. That's so ridiculous. I, I don't think, unless there's folks out there that have had vehicles that just had a lot of heart and soul and uh, uh, are attributed to such good times, you know, if you could understand what I'm talking about, but to actually have a uh, a reaction like that at uh, virtually an emotional level, and uh, seeing your old uh, yellow submarine saying goodbye, going down for the last time. Um, yeah, but of course that passed and went, and I'm like, okay, okay, of course, well adjusted to it now. Uh, so, I took and I bought myself a utility trailer for now, for immediately, so that I can take and hook it up to the passenger car. It's got a hitch. It's all wired for it. I was planning to do this for a while, thinking about it and making the preparations ahead of time, so that when I finally, when I finally got up and did it, um, I'd be ready to go. So I am ready to go. I got a, a nice little utility trailer, and. Uh, the hitch works great on the little Mazda Protégé, which gets fantastic gas mileage. Um, it's not too much for it to tow. On steep hills, we'll find out, but I've put, also put in an extra uh, uh, beef to the, uh, to, the air, to, or to, the, to the cooling system of the car. Uh, it's a dual fan type of radiator, and uh, the second one won't come on until it's practically overheated or the air conditioning's running and that kind of thing. So I put in a direct switch so I can just throw the switch and turn on the secondary fan and maintain cooling uh, on the, the slower climbs, uh, steeper hills and stuff like that, especially, you know, towing a trailer. So that's going to be a new venture for a while while I, uh, while I wait because I am taking time for the Volkswagen to sell. It's remaining at the mechanics shop. Best place for it. He's connected with Semba online and all that kind of stuff. He gets uh, uh, people looking for Volkswagens uh, constantly. My other reason for doing it 
is I feel that the time has come too uh, that Volkswagens are at a peak in value. Mine is in 1971. That makes it a super classic. And you know today's yesterday's generation <laughs> they don't uh, they don't have the awareness or the appreciation of uh, just what a gas those vehicles are. And it's my humble opinion that the escalated value that we presently have in these vehicles is going to start to decline. Uh, so now's the time. So anyway, uh, I'll probably uh, head up the Rover Wilderness first. Uh, that's a fantastic area. I did some filming with my Sony uh, action cam up there, high definition action, action cam. Uh, what I didn't like was it was the first time I used it. I had the case on it and made the novice error of doing that, which made the audio terrible, just terrible. The other thing was that it had a GPS tracking on it that laid out a, uh, a chart, a course, of uh, how far I was walking, the speed, you know, uh, also elevation gains. It's, it's fascinating camera with incredible software capability, but I didn't want any of that on there. I just wanted to be a plain video. So uh, there's uh, uh, a little bit of a curve to be learning. There's going to have to be a, a, a hardware update to it, as well as a software update that uh, it can take and uh, uh, bring it up to snuff. It's a great camera, but uh, even though it's a modern camera, it came with a need for uh, these uh, hardware and software upgrades uh, made available by Sony. So I can get that uh, taken care of and packed up and with me uh, and or use the camera that I'm on right now which is very very old school. This is a, a Fuji film. I don't know what it is. It's old time. And uh, it has a memory card on it that doesn't last long at all. So um, my other camera uh, I've ordered uh, many, many memory cards, many, many batteries. I mean, I, I'm set up to do uh, YouTube with that in a, a quality fashion. So that's where we're heading. And uh, it's been a while since I uh, made a film. Most of the ones I've had recently were real short. They were uh, uh, just a kind of a closing video. Mostly sup sip snippets of my photography on Instagram of the um, of a, just a beautiful, beautiful place uh, called Sweet Creek. You guys probably remember that if you're on my Instagram as well. There's more uh, photos of that trip to be posted. And my God, they're beautiful. They are just absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's an incredible uh, little uh, oasis of heaven on earth. It truly is. So uh, look for that on Instagram uh, because it's uh, really, out really outstanding stuff that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, a great place for me and Cody to swim together and have a good time. Um, I'm, I'm going to include a lot more of that, especially with this uh, Sony Action Cam, because it's a it's a land water camera. It, it, it films underwater as well, of course. And uh, so I think that uh, that would be pretty good. I also have the intent, I believe, to. Uh, uh, I've been so impressed with some other channels, uh, uh, Johnny Outdoors, uh, Matt Cook, Oregon, by the way. That's Matt Cook, Oregon. Uh, just does. I told him on his last video, you've got to see it. It's it's like a Disney production, no lie. It displays uh, uh, some Oregon areas in the finest symmetry, uh, skill that I've ever seen. It's just it's, it's. I haven't seen anything on YouTube done as well. Uh, in cinema scope, uh, as as Matt Cook Oregon has done with this most recent uh, video, his that just says simply Oregon on it, and uh, have a look. Uh, the the other creator that I want to do some emulation of is John, uh, Johnny Outdoors. He's based in the UK, and he never has uh, any uh, verbiage on his videos. It's always 100% uh, tuned to the most perfect uh, music for the imagery being displayed. I've been taken back by the. I, I watch that at least, oh, well, at a minimal every other night. I have some hot chocolate or something in my night watching uh, uh, Johnny Outdoors. It's uh, it's so relaxing. Uh, Travis of uh, 
Shasta Valley Outdoors is doing the same thing. Uh, about one in every four videos of his or so, approximately, are a video where it's just beautiful scenery and soundtrack to complement it. And when you get the right sound complement, accompaniment uh, to a video in the great outdoors, it, it's enjoyable to watch. So here we are at the lake, at the uh, 10 Mile Lakes, uh, taking Cody to chase the geese, which are especially flighty because I believe that they are not local geese. I believe that they were migratory because they just really, really flighty. I would have given you a shot of that. It's kind of cool. But uh, they were up and out here too fast. They are out there. I did a separate fit. There they go. I just point, look at that. I point at them and they take off. Way over there. <laughs> That's how flighty they are. There they go. A huge flock of them. Adults and uh, young, young mid, young mid-aged adult Canadian geese. That honking comes across the water so well. So anyway, my friends, it's a great evening. The sun is going to be going down pretty quick. I'm heading back home. I'm going to take Cody and race him around the the, the track over here. We've got a huge parking lot over here, and uh, he loves to make my car, my car do figure eights at about 24 miles an hour on that thing. It, if I can do anything for him, uh, there is nothing that he enjoys more in this life. It is an icing on the cake for him to get to herd my car. And the local sheriff's department and the, uh, the caretakers of this great big huge county park here, everybody knows old Oregon Mike H and the Cody Dog. And uh, I've got everybody's blessings with him off leash at all times, which nobody else does. <laughs> and uh, he's just... Uh, a well-known figure here as you can imagine. So anyway, let's all sign off and uh, wish you guys the very best. And you know, as always, from the heart, blessings to you from Oregon and uh, I'll be catching you soon. Looking forward to the videos that are going to be coming your way. Thank you.